I went my whole life without using a point and shoot camera and now I'm in love with my Ricoh GR3. This tiny form factor mirrorless point and shoot camera has completely changed the way that I shoot behind the scenes photography for my videos. It used to be that on the job I would take BTS photos on my phone. I'd bring it out, scroll through all the notifications and texts that I had received, set it up to take a photo and then after the shoot, search through my gallery to find the ones I actually wanted to share but that's when I found the Ricoh GR3. Using the Ricoh GR3 on set, I can capture high quality pictures of my productions at a moment's notice. And then I can ingest the pictures on the SD card right alongside the footage I shot that day. I don't claim to be an expert on the GR3. There's an entire fan base devoted to a love of this camera and others in the GR line. Doing a bit of research though, I found some tips which helped me transform my little Ricoh GR3 into an even better behind the scenes camera. And I wanna share them with you. Here's how I made my Ricoh GR3 into the ultimate behind the scenes camera. For me, this camera is destined to live in a pocket or bag for its entire usable life. So the first thing I did when I got my Ricoh GR3 camera was I took a few small pieces of high strength gaff tape and cut them down into little squares to place over the two microphone holes on the front of the camera. I also placed a piece of tape over the speaker hole at the bottom of the camera. I was convinced to do this by several users online who claimed it could help prevent dust from entering your non-weather sealed camera. I wouldn't normally do this if I needed to use the microphone or the speakers on the camera, but I am certain that I will not be recording any audio or require any playback from this camera, so I just went for it. The topic of dust entering the bodies of GR cameras has always been a tough talking point. Fortunately, if you do start to see debris in your images on the GR3, it has a special cleaning mode which should shake loose any particles that have landed on the sensor using the camera's built-in image stabilization system. The next modification that I did was literally just one that came in the box. I attached the wrist strap that came with the camera. I took the strap and I threaded it into one of the three mounting holes, this one being on the camera's right side. There are a couple different points where you can attach this strap, so place it into the spot that works best for you. The Ricoh GR3 has a surprisingly stable grip when using a small camera with one hand, and I like how it feels. But I can almost guarantee that a camera of this build won't last a drop of almost any size, so best to err on the side of caution. The wrist strap is about as light as it can be without hurting your confidence in its ability to hold the camera. Overall, perfectly serviceable, wouldn't brag about it. I see a lot of people online using Peak Design straps as well, those could be a good option. The next modification that I did was I installed a screen protector onto the back of the Ricoh GR3. In 2023, you can buy a screen protector for essentially any device. They're arguably one of the most popular electronics accessories categories on the market. On the Ricoh GR3, the back screen is non-user serviceable and it doesn't move or anything. It's just attached to the back of the camera. So it's best to protect it unless you wanna send a damaged screen back to Ricoh. The screen protector I went with was from a utterly unrecognizable brand called Ulpter on Amazon. It had positive reviews and came with a few helpful accessories to get the screen to stick just right. Hopefully this will prevent scratches to my new GR3. The next thing I did which protects the camera and actually I think looks really good is I bought a front lens cap for my GR3. The lens cap that I purchased is from a company called JJC and is designed to be only on the camera while the unit is off. I like to think this lens cap helps me reduce wear on the front leaf element of the camera when it's bouncing around in a bag or pocket. It's a great little travel cap and it looks honestly like an OEM part. It's even got the GR logo right in the middle. I do have to note that having a lens cap on this camera is not like using a lens cap on a traditional mirrorless camera. This is because the lens on the Ricoh GR3 extends outwards when you turn on the camera. Obviously, the goal is to remove the lens cap when you start shooting. Okay, so here's the demonstration. A few times already, I've left the lens cap on when I've pressed the on button on the camera and the lens boops the, the cap off and just makes it clang on the floor or wherever I am. And it's a good reminder not to do that. So here's what that looks like stayed on. The next thing I did was get a big SD card for this camera. If you're a filmmaker or a video shooter, you likely already have SD cards laying around. This was the case in my scenario where I had a bunch of high performance SD cards which I used for my business cameras. 
but I also had a number of older spec SD cards which didn't have any particular use. And the great thing about the Ricoh is that it's more than happy to take those older, slower SD cards. Because the camera doesn't shoot exceptionally fast or at an exceptionally high resolution, you can use less performance-oriented SD cards to store your photos. I personally went with the SanDisk Extreme Plus 150. Oh, please focus. The SanDisk Extreme Plus 150 megabit per second, megabit, megabyte, MP per second V30 card, which would be too slow to shoot on my FX3 or my FX6 but it was perfectly serviceable when I was shooting on an a7 III. That is just gonna live right in there, and uh, to be honest, 128 gigs on a Ricoh GR3 might as well be infinity. I, I'm never gonna hit that. I'm gonna burn through three batteries before I hit that. One thing I'd quickly like to note is the Ricoh GR3 actually comes with two gigabytes of internal storage, which is so cool. I think that's such a unique element of this like go anywhere point and shoot camera is that even if I forget an SD card, I still have enough memory to essentially take a films reel worth of photos, which will save. I haven't used that yet, but it will save me. I can almost guarantee it. Speaking of battery life though, let's toss a few more batteries into the package because this camera does not last particularly long. The Ricoh GR3 is rated at 200 photos on a battery which should be enough for my BTS, but just in case, it would be nice to have a few extra batteries. Oh, and let's throw in a charger too, because the Ricoh does not include an external charger. I went super off brand for my batteries, which is not something I would normally recommend, but they've been working just fine for me, but your mileage may vary. I purchased a set of two DSTE batteries and a charger off Amazon for less than Ricoh charges for a single battery. And those are the things that I did to my little Ricoh GR3 to turn it into the ultimate behind the scenes camera for my video shoots. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments and thank you for watching.